In 1938, Mao Zedong said this to his party's men. Seek truth from facts. That's what he said. Seek truth from facts. It's actually a very old Chinese expression. It talks about the pursuit of truth and research. But Chairman Mao was not talking about that truth. He was talking about the communist truth. His party's convenient version of truth. And since then, it has become part of every Chinese leader's strategy. Revision of history? Say it's part of seeking the truth. Invade foreign lands, blame it on China's original truth. The fact is, truth in China is not absolute. Truth is what the party says it is. On Sunday, we saw the latest example of this. Chinese tennis star Peng Shuai was speaking to a Singaporean daily. 48 days back, remember, she went public with her Me Too story. But on Sunday, she changed her story. She said people have misunderstood her. Listen to this. Uh well, those were Peng Shuai's words, but we all know who wrote them. The Chinese Communist Party, there are no two ways about this. We've read Peng Shuai's Weibo post from November. It was emotional, it was detailed, it was genuine. So what explains this U-turn? Political intimidation. Imagine how powerful the party must be. 48 days back, Peng Shuai accused a former Chinese premier Look at what's happened since then. First, she went missing. Nobody knew whether the country's biggest tennis star was even alive. Then a so-called email emerged. Again, most likely dictated by the Communist Party. And finally, she was staged at a restaurant. As if there was no controversy, no allegations. Just another day for Peng Shuai eating out with friends. The final act was Sunday's interview, what you just saw. This time, it was a complete denial. Do you see the pattern here? First, intimidate the victim, maybe bully or kidnap her. Second, buy time with fake emails and staged public events. And finally, make the same person take back her words. If there's no allegation, there is no crime. If there's no crime, there is no need for a probe. This is how you kill the Me Too movement. We talk about systemic abuse. Well, this is systemic cover-up. That's how China does it. And credit to the Women's Tennis Association because they're not buying it. Here's what the WTA statement says, and let me read it out for you. As we have consistently stated, these appearances do not alleviate or address the WTA's significant concerns about her well-being and ability to communicate without censorship or coercion. We remain steadfast in our call for a full, fair and transparent investigation. That pretty much covers it. The entire Chinese state machinery is attacking one woman. The state media ignored her claims. The diplomats are calling it politicization of sport. The cyber cops are censoring social media. They're taking down articles linked to Peng Shuai. And you know the worst part of this? The alleged assaulter has not even spoken yet. Zhang Gaoli, the former Chinese premier, he's neither denied it nor accepted it. He has said nothing. And why would he? He's got the entire Chinese regime battling his case. That is the communist truth. An alternate reality where every communist is perfect, where Chinese leaders can do no wrong, where accusers are misunderstood. How does China create this perfect truth? With the help of their trusted spokesman, the state media. It's a pretty straightforward relationship. Beijing orders, state media obeys. That's how they function. If you want to get China's reaction on any global event, all you have to do is read the Global Times or head to the CGTN or Shinoa. Their op-eds are basically government statements. But what if you challenge this system? What if state media tries to find its voice? Well, they get sacked. And that's what happened to this man, Hu Shijin. He was the editor-in-chief of Global Times for 16 years. Officially, he says he retired. But rumor is Beijing benched him. You're probably familiar with Hu Shijing's work. I would not call him a journalist or even an editor. 
He's more of an internet troll. His job was to basically offend everybody except his masters in Beijing. But last month, he slipped up. He wrote an op-ed criticizing the lack of media freedom in China. These are his words. Quoting again, Frankly speaking, media practitioners have been subject to increasing restrictions for some time. I feel deeply that this is becoming, it is becoming more and more difficult to do media. That's what he wrote. Beijing read this article and their reaction was quite simple. It's, if it's difficult to quote unquote do media, then don't do it. One month later, Hu Shijin retires. Is this coincidence? Well, in China, there is no such thing as coincidence. And that op-ed, by the way, was taken down, but it was too late. China decided that Hu Shijin's truth was different from theirs. And just like that, he was gone. 460,000 Twitter followers, hundreds of articles singing praises of Xi Jinping, all of it down the drain. Both these controversies, Hu Shijin and Peng Shuai, suggest the same trend. Party above all. Chinese editors are great as long as they remain stooges. Chinese athletes are heroes as long as they do not accuse the leaders. Only one truth matters in China. And that truth does not belong to victims of sexual assault. It does not belong to journalism or to activists. In China, truth is a communist monopoly.